Well, hi there, everyone. My name is Scott Nicholson. And I'm here to talk with you a little bit about libraries and what they've been doing with gaming. Uh, the way I actually got here was interesting. I got a call from the organizers of Games for Change, and they said, Scott, we're really concerned. Uh, we found that we put out this call for museums and libraries and cultural institutions to talk about how they're using games. And they said, we're a little worried because we got nobody doing games in libraries. And we know that you have been at other conferences and asked annoying questions of speakers and said, hey, what about libraries? And we'd like to invite you to come up and talk to the developers here about ways that they could partner with libraries. And so that's really the goal of my talk today is to help you understand how you could partner with libraries, what you could do to help take your games and find new communities where they could find access to. Now, a little bit about myself. As has been talked about several times during this session, it's important to have some game design experience. Uh, I'm a heavy board gamer. Oh, heavy board gamer, yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, I did a video series called Board Games with Scott for five years. I'm a published board game designer, and I've got more board game designs coming out. And on the library side, I used to be a reference librarian, and now at Syracuse University School of Information Studies, I teach people who want to be librarians. So what I'm going to do today, today is talk about three things. I'm going to talk about the concept of libraries and networks, the concept of libraries as service providers, and some opportunities that you can use to get involved with libraries. This book I'm showing, by the way, I'll have some of the books that you could use to learn more about this. Gamers in the Library was the first big book written about uh, video game competitions in libraries. And Eli, who's a librarian in Michigan, talked about how hundreds of kids would all gather and pour into the library to play games against each other. Now, first we're going to have a little quiz. So I want you to think for a moment. Now, if you read the program, you know the answer to this. But if you didn't, that's fine. Um, how many libraries are there in the United States? Now, for reference, I've given you the number of subway establishments there are in the United States, how many McDonald's there are, how many Pizza Huts there are. Think for a moment. The number of libraries in the US falls somewhere on this list. So think about what that might be. Where, where did libraries fall compared to these different fast food chains? Well, the answer, there's actually more libraries than there are on that entire list combined. For every one subway out there, you know, there's 23,000 subways, there's 121,000 libraries in the United States. These represent opportunities for you to partner on a small scale or a large scale. And that's what I'm going to be presenting here are the opportunities you have. Now, a good chunk of those are school libraries. About 100,000 school libraries are out there. When I came, I, for the last year I worked at MIT, I was at MIT on a sabbatical. And when I came there, I was talking with some people who were frustrated. They were trying to get their games out to school teachers. And I said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, we bring in groups of school teachers and we train them. And I think, you know, if rather than bringing in individual school teachers, you brought in school librarians and help, help them understand about your game, one school librarian who gets excited about what you're doing gets to take that to a whole bunch of teachers. It's a, it's a multiplication effect. So focusing on libraries actually helps you to take what you're doing and get it out there further, get it into the classroom. There's about 16,000 public libraries out there. We'll talk a little bit more about those. So with public libraries, this is a, a graph that shows every dot represents a public library in the United States. Every red box that's out there is one of the MSAs, a heavy, uh, a heavy population area in the US. And so if you look, there's a lot of dots there that aren't in the red areas. We focus so much on the, the urban needs of urban youth in America. And I think about, you know, there's a lot of kids out there in these rural spaces that are not supported by anything, but they do have a local library. These libraries in rural communities represent connections for you to reach out to communities that right now you have no access to. A lot of these kids are growing up in places where they don't have the internet at home. We say, well, we'll just put the game online. Well, it doesn't necessarily work. Public libraries are places where people are coming to get that online access. In fact, the way it works, as, as the economy goes down, the use of public libraries goes up. And then as the economy comes back up, the use of public libraries goes down. And this is a really dangerous spot. Because this is when people say, oh, why do we need libraries? We've got all this other stuff. Well, the reason we need libraries is because when the economy goes down again, they're there to support the information needs. Now, libraries have changed a lot. They're really focusing on concepts of services rather than concepts of stuff. So this is actually a picture of the chess club in San Francisco at the Mechanics Institute Library. This library has the chess club that is the oldest running chess club that's still going in the United States. It was from the 1850s. There was gaming and libraries going on. In the last five years, I've been doing investigation about gaming and libraries. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So we've had chess in the US library since the 1850s. In the UK, there were smoking rooms and billiard parlors and gaming rooms in public libraries in the 1850s as well. And through time, we've been engaging people with games. 
libraries through the Great Depression, where there, were a, there was a time where there were these contests where people could apply to win a lot of money by solving puzzles, and they would bombard the libraries. Libraries have continued to be engaged with gaming through summer reading programs and through allowing people to engage with games in, in, on their computers. And in fact, we did a study. We, we did a, a random sample of 400 public libraries in the US. We talked to most of them and found out that about 75% of public libraries in the US support games in some way. They're open to hear something from you. About 40% of public libraries have formal gaming programs where you go to the library and play games. And libraries are becoming these places where we come together, not necessarily a place for stuff. They're a place for services supported by stuff. This is a public library that's actually um, in Delft, uh, D-O-K or DOC. They call themselves the most advanced public library in the world. And I've been there. It's really neat stuff. What you're seeing here, this is in the public library. It's a Microsoft Surface. People bring in their library cards. They drop their library cards on the Microsoft Surface. It calls up from the, from the database pictures and stories about the neighborhoods where they've lived based upon their library card. And then they go over to a recording booth and record a personal story about that neighborhood. And so the library is building this, this history of the community, and we're actually seeing a lot of this develop now, where we've got libraries as preserving cultural heritage of the space where they are. This library also in Delft has audio rooms and, and places to listen to music. This is also in that library, interesting space where you can go and engage with music. But they're also now getting more and more involved in creation. This is actually a Fayetteville Public Library uh, near Syracuse University where I'm a professor. You may have seen them, they've been talked about in NPR. They've got a maker lab. And so this is actually a 3D printer that people can come into the library and use. Libraries becoming spaces for creation, spaces for exploration, spaces for services, and spaces that you can partner up with. Now, I talked a little bit about libraries and games. Um, I actually helped the Fayetteville Library start a gaming program a few years ago. I did it during the summer. And what we found, so we started the gaming program, and we actually did it right after the, the, the computer class for seniors. People would come into the library, they would engage with the games, and what I found is throughout the summer, the teens and the seniors in that community began to get to know each other by name and began to talk to each other and engage with each other. And in, think about in your community, where is there a space where teens and seniors can engage with each other in a non-biased manner that's also not creepy? The library provides that safe space. And that game they could be playing could be your game. They could be engaging around the games you're creating. Think about the topics of games you've made. That's covered in the library. The library, they have all the topics, all the topics, all the topics that are out there. <laughs> the library has available for you to partner with them to say, hey, let's do a financial game. Let's do a literacy game. Let's do a safety game. The library is interested in that. You want a demographic to focus on? You've got everything from cradle to grave supported there at the library. And so they're there. Partnerships are available for you. This is a university library, so we're seeing more and more university libraries get into gaming as well. Um, many university libraries have places to play games, to engage, to study games. Special libraries, those, sort of, those libraries where you go and find rare books and special collections, they're starting to get engaged with, with, with games. I worked a bit with the State Department and embassy libraries around the world where they were wanting to use games in order to communicate information about the US. This is an interesting story. So one of my students, Don Dennis, is a librarian at four rural libraries in South Carolina. He works as the youth librarian and goes between them to run gaming programs. And he's been running game development programs. He's helped these kids to learn how to make games. Now what's cool about this, these kids are rural kids. And he said, you know, these are kids who didn't see themselves going on to college. But he started game design programs, he got them involved in making games, and they started to say, hey, this is pretty cool. And now these kids are going on to the local community college in math and programming and art and, and things related to game design. Now the reality is they're not gonna end up making games most likely, but boy, talk about a shove in the right direction. And this could be you working with your local library helping to run a program like this. So whether it be game design, whether it be digital game design or analog game design, you can take your knowledge and bring it in. If you work with board games and you wanna look at how some school librarians, Brian Mayer and Chris Harris wrote this book, Libraries Got Game, and what they did is they took a bunch of authentic board games and mapped it to school curriculum. So that a teacher said, hey, I'm teaching seventh grade history, are there real board games I could use? Because they talk about the concept of an authentic game, a game first and something to learn with later. That's what they've been focusing on. So uh, Jay McGonigal worked with the Find the Future program. I actually was one of 500 people who was locked into the New York Public Library overnight. And, and we wrote a book in one night. That was a very interesting time, and I also learned that, well, I'm not as young as I used to be, and at about 3 o'clock, I found a few chairs to lay down and 
had myself a find the nap, but uh, it worked out. And so what happened is throughout the night, we were all sent throughout the library to find items and artifacts in the library and then reflect upon them and write stories. And those stories were printed out and given to an editor who then took them and gave them to a bookbinder. And right there, they were being bound into a book. And at the end of the night, we all signed the book as authors and this book now is in the New York Public Library. And there's no reason you couldn't do something like this in your local community. You pay taxes to a library who's there to support your information needs. And you could go and say, hey, let's do something like this. You may have 30 kids who come overnight, but it's something you could do because you think about the game space. Libraries present that opportunity to partner up. So things you could do to get involved. One, give a talk like this. This is me in the story time room at a, a, a library in, in upstate New York talking about how to use games. And the first thing I always do is I try to convince folks, hey, by the way, you're all gamers, and these are why games are important. That's a lot of what I do. So give a talk. Go in and run a workshop. Try to get people engaged with, uh, with what's going on. So this is me facilitating a games day. This is a game called Wits and Wagers, which is a great trivia game. But go in and bring your games and say, hey, we'd like to do some play testing. We'd like to help people get involved with the games we're creating. Because you're a member of the community as well. Help run a game design program, get people engaged. And it doesn't have to be digital game design. All you really need, the nice thing about game design is all you need is a poster board, some movers, and some dice, and you've got a game design. You can do something in a few hours. I did something like this actually at um, the MIT uh, Science Museum. I was there and I ran a junkyard games day. And so the idea was that families came together, I got this big pile of stuff from the dollar store, wrapped each thing up in a bag, dumped it all in a giant pile, and then had each family said, you can come up to the pile and get four things and take them back to your table. So picture, if you will, the Hunger Games. And at the beginning there, where all these kids came careening into them, so maybe I didn't think that one out so well. Anyway, um, what I did then is for an hour, I let the kids and parents make games. And I said, think about something fun you do with this stuff. Now add a scoring system and a goal and make a game. And then they taught each other the games and they competed on the games they created. The whole program cost under 100 bucks to put on. It had a whole room full of people involved with it, and it got people, and I used that time to talk about it. Okay, this is what it is to make a game. You come up with an idea, you test, you iterate, you play test. So what happened? And I ran them through the process, and they went away thinking about how they too can make games. So one way to get involved, you want to get involved in a big way. In your packet, there's a yellow sheet that says International Gaming Day. So National Gaming Day at your library ran for the last three years. We're now making International, the International Gaming Day at your library. Uh, and so this is November 3rd of this year. Our goal with this program was to get people in libraries playing games on the same day. We ran this program, and last year we got about 30,000 people in libraries playing games on November 12th. And we've worked with game developers to help take games you created and push them out to libraries. So the libraries had your games available. I've actually made videos teaching libraries how to use games that they can, because libraries are looking for games they could use for low price or for free to get it out there. So this is a chance you can partner with the American Library Association. The contact name is on here, Jenny Levine. She works with the American Library Association. They're actively seeking partners to help get games out to every library. Now we're trying to go for the world. We're just gonna continue growing this. And so this is a great opportunity whether you want to make a one-on-one -on -one connection in your community with giving a talk, whether you want to affect a lot of kids by giving a workshop, or whether you want to try and affect every library in the world, you've got opportunities. So to learn more, I've got a book on this stuff, Everyone Plays at the Library. I suggest you buy it and give it to your local library. Um, there's also a website, gamesandlibraries.org, has a lot of information about this. The other thing I'm doing is, with my research, I'm now looking at something called meaningful gamification, which is I'm taking how libraries find relevant stuff for their users and applying those same models to using game elements to help people find something relevant in a non-game context. So I've got more stuff about that, what's going on at becausePlayMatters.com. And if you want to write me and ask me how you can get involved, I'm at Scott at ScottNicholson.com. So next year, I want to be in the audience hearing about your partnerships with libraries. Thank you.